something happened at the convention which I didn't really expect, and that is a thought that I've been meditating on for the last couple of years was really developed and confirmed and extended here. And it's the key truth that we don't invite God to help us with our mission, but that God invites us with incredible grace and generosity to be part of his mission. And that has been a key idea extended for me at this convention. It seems to me that if the basic truth is that God invites us to participate in his mission, our main responsibility is to wait. In a book on prayer, Archbishop Anthony Bloom of the Greek Orthodox Church says that waiting is something which is neither passive nor active, but more like what a sentry on watch does. It's about being alert. It's about being responsive to what you hear. And that does seem to me to be the key to the Christian life. Waiting in prayer, listening, sensing the presence, hearing the voice of God. Waiting also as a new way of living, rather than racing into the activity of each day, first of all waiting to see what God is doing and what he's inviting us to take part in. And for me, over the last uh, year, waiting as literally the key thing that I do. Um, as the bishop has said, I now have a wonderful role as overseas ambassador for the Petra schools. And that means when I'm at home, spending a lot of time in the schools, seeing what God is doing and hearing what stories are taking place, and then telling those stories to our friends overseas. I do spend time every day literally sitting under a tree waiting to see what will happen, waiting to see who will come, waiting to listen to whatever they want to say. And I've told some stories about that, but there's one I'd like to uh, tell you this morning about a girl, I suppose she's 15, called Leah Mohammed who, what, three weeks ago, came to me with tears pouring down her cheeks. And she told me that quite recently Jesus Christ had become very real to her and that the main thing in her life was now following him, but that it had a cost. As a result of that, she had lost all her friends. And she said to me, how do I find new friends? And for someone of my age, giving a teenage girl advice on how to find friends is not something that I'm well equipped to do. So we talked for a while and we talked about rebuilding friendship with her former friends, but it was clear that that was not going to happen. And we talked about where she might find new friends and we talked about everyone she knew, all her classmates and that wasn't going to happen either. So at the end I said, well, I think we're both stuck. I don't know what to do, but this is the kind of time where we ask God for help. And we did that. And I do think that that's a place that God often takes us to while we wait. A place of saying, I don't know what to do. I'm helpless. God, this is your problem. And the week later she came to me, her face wreathed in smiles, so I knew that God had done something. I always feel a bit anxious about saying, well, let's see what God will do in case he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but he never fails to do something. Doesn't always do what we want, doesn't always do what we ask, but in this occasion he had. She told me that the previous day she'd been sitting watching some sport and a group of girls had come up to her, a group of girls a year younger than he, and said, we'd love to be friends with you. And that sort of story can be quite unhelpful, 
I know, because sometimes we're not sure what God's doing. And in Zimbabwe, over the last 15 years, we know all about that. We've begged God to change things, and so far he hasn't. So I'm not saying we always understand what God is doing, but I do believe he always does something. And Psalm 27 has meant a lot to me. It ends like this. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. And I do believe that though we don't always understand what God is doing, if we wait, we will always experience his goodness. And that's what gives me hope for the schools, the Petra schools, hope for Zimbabwe. And I've been amazed at the enormous hope that I've discovered here in the Episcopal Church in Vermont. And that hope really comes from Jesus. Psalm 27 in the Anglican Prayer Book is set as a psalm for the Tuesday of Holy Week. And I think that's incredibly perceptive because we can imagine those words as the words of Jesus as he faced the cross. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Which means that for us as well, through death there's always new life and through the cross there's always resurrection. Thank you so much for letting me be with you here during these days. Thank you.